Good evening, darling. I hope your day was good and that Hobhouse or Leander didn't speak to you again. Ugh, those two infuriate me. Enough of that, though. What did you do today? Did you wander through the blooming meadows or find solace beneath the shade of ancient oaks? Ah, perhaps you spent the day reading, a pastime I know you cherish dearly. I spent the majority of my day wrangling Sebastian in, an exhausting task as you know. He actually managed to drag me through half the castle with his newest rantings of finding secret passages in Hogwarts, thinking that there's shortcuts we haven't uncovered. He swears there's one that leads to the cellars of Zonko's. Truth be told, I'm just glad that he's not focused on the dark arts like he was. What was that? You want me to read to you? Are you saying that my voice puts you to... sleep? <laughs> of course I'll read to you, my love. Here, make sure you're comfortable and I'll start reading this storybook where you left off. Sound good? All right, here we go. Once upon a time, in the enchanting kingdom of Eldoria, there lived a mighty dragon named Ember and a beautiful princess named Isabella. Eldoria was a realm of magic and wonder, where dragons roamed freely, and the skies were painted with vivid hues at sunrise and sunset. Ember was no ordinary dragon. He possessed shimmering scales that glowed like the stars at night, and his eyes sparkled like the rarest gemstones. Despite his majestic appearance, Ember had a gentle heart and a longing for friendship. However, being a dragon, he was often misunderstood and feared by the kingdom's people. Princess Isabella, on the other hand, was wise beyond her years and had a compassionate nature. She cared deeply for the creatures of Eldoria and dreamed of a world where all beings could live together in harmony. One evening, as she gazed out of her tower window at the setting sun, she noticed a glimmer in the distant mountains. Curiosity tugged at Isabella's heart, and she decided to investigate the mysterious light. Armed with a sense of adventure and kindness, she embarked on a journey to discover the source of the glowing spectacle. Little did she know that she would find Ember, the lonely dragon, who had been lighting up the night sky with his luminous scales. Deep in the heart of the mountains, Isabella encountered Ember, and despite her initial surprise, she felt an instant connection with him. Instead of being frightened, she approached the dragon with a smile and introduced herself. To her astonishment, Ember responded with a gentle rumble, as if he understood her. As the days turned into weeks, Isabella and Ember spent time together, sharing stories and laughter. They discovered that they both had dreams of unity between humans and dragons, breaking the age-old barrier of fear that had separated their worlds. Their bond grew stronger, and they soon became the best of friends. Word of the dragon and the princess's friendship spread across Eldoria, and the kingdom's people were torn between amazement and trepidation. While some saw the harmony in the princess's actions, others clung to old prejudices and warned of the dangers of befriending a dragon. One fateful day, a band of fearful knights from a neighbouring realm decided to put an end to the princess's friendship with Ember. They stormed into Eldoria, armed with swords and shields, determined to rid the kingdom of the dragon they perceived as a threat. Isabella, filled with courage and conviction, stepped forward to protect her friend. She spoke eloquently, imploring the knights to see the beauty in Ember's heart and the hope they could bring to their lands by embracing unity. Her words struck a chord with some of the knights, who lowered their weapons, moved by her sincerity. Yet there were a few who remained unmoved, their fear blinding them to reason. As they prepared to attack, Ember unfurled his majestic wings, summoning the magic that lay within him. A dazzling display of light enveloped the dragon, illuminating the entire kingdom. The knights were awestruck by the breathtaking sight before them. They saw Ember's true nature, not as a fearsome creature, but as a being of light and benevolence. Their hearts softened, and they too dropped their weapons. From that day forth, the kingdom of Eldoria embraced the friendship between the dragon and the princess. Ember's radiant scales became a symbol of hope and unity, reminding the people of the power of understanding and compassion. Isabella and Ember's story became a legend passed down through generations, inspiring future rulers and adventurers to seek understanding and acceptance beyond appearances. And so, in the realm of Eldoria, humans and dragons learned to live together in harmony, proving that friendship and love knew no boundaries not even those of mythical creatures and princesses.
Ah, uh, I can hear you're drifting off. Your breathing is slowing and more steady. I'll read a bit more quietly. Don't want to wake you, you barely sleep anyway. Once upon a time, in a mysterious land called Enchantia, there were two powerful magical beings, a witch named Serena and a wizard named Orion. Enchantia was a place of extraordinary wonders, where magic flowed through the air like a symphony of sparkling stardust. Serena and Orion were both renowned for their magical prowess, but they had an ancient rivalry that ran deep in their families. For generations, their families had competed, each claiming their own unique form of magic was superior. This rivalry created a deep-seated animosity between Serena and Orion from the moment they met. The two would often clash, causing spells to fly like fireworks, their magical jewels shaking the very earth they stood on. Villagers whispered stories of their feuds, fearing the cataclysmic results of their bitter enmity. But little did they know that fate had other plans for Serena and Orion. One fateful day, an ominous darkness threatened to engulf Enchantia. A malevolent sorcerer, who harboured a grudge against both families, sought to destroy the land and all its magic. Serena and Orion, despite their hostility, realised that they could not let their differences stand in the way of protecting their home. Putting their personal quarrels aside, Serena and Orion joined forces to confront the wicked sorcerer. The battle was fierce, their combined magic creating a dazzling spectacle that illuminated the skies. In the midst of the chaos, Serena found herself in grave danger, and without hesitation, Orion rushed to save her. In that moment, something shifted within Serena's heart. As she looked into Orion's eyes, she saw a vulnerability that she had never noticed before. Their alliance forged a newfound trust, and as the battle raged on, they began to understand each other in ways they had never imagined. This reminds me of us in a way, darling. Is that why you read these stories? Hmm... Their victory against the Dark Sorcerer cemented their partnership, and over time they transformed from rivals to allies. They spent hours discussing spells, sharing magical knowledge, and exploring Enchantia together. As they discovered the beauty of their shared interests, animosity turned to fondness, and they gradually became friends. As their friendship grew stronger, so did their feelings for one another. But fear held them both captive, afraid that admitting their love might shatter the delicate bond they had built. So they chose to keep their feelings hidden, cherishing the friendship they had come to treasure. One enchanting evening, under a canopy of twinkling stars, Serena and Orion found themselves sitting by a tranquil lake. The reflections of the moon danced on the water's surface as they shared stories and laughed together, their hearts entwined in a magical rhythm. In the soft glow of the moonlight, Orion mustered his courage and confessed, Serena, you've brought so much light into my life. I've never known a friendship like this before. Serena smiled warmly, her heart fluttering like a thousand butterflies. Orion, you've changed my perspective on everything. Our friendship means more to me than any magic ever could. In that moment, their fears faded, and they found solace in each other's understanding. With trembling hands, they reached for one another, their lips meeting in a gentle, tender kiss. As they embraced, the magic of Enchantia seemed to dance around them, celebrating the union of two souls that had overcome hatred to find love. And so, in the magical realm of Enchantia, a witch and a wizard discovered that love was the most potent magic of all. Their love story became a tale of hope, reminding everyone that even the deepest animosity could be transformed into the most profound love, and that the most extraordinary adventures often began with a single step of bravery. From that moment on, Serena and Orion stood side by side, weaving their magic together, hand in hand, as eternal companions in Enchantia's tapestry of enchantment. You know, I am truly glad that our friendship was similar to that story. Though the animosity was from my end mostly. Does that make you Orion and me, Serena? <laughs> I truly do find myself grateful for you, darling. I'm not sure I could ever admit this while you were awake, maybe one day, but not just yet. You somehow bring out a side of me that I've never really seen, and I am consistently impressed by that. Even though you attribute anything positive about yourself to this ancient magic you wield, my darling, you are what is truly magic. I can feel you waking up because I'm not reading anymore, no worries. I'm continuing on. 
in a realm beyond the stars, where the heavens danced with celestial wonders, there existed a sacred ceremony known as the Celestial Chosen. Every millennium, two exceptional beings were selected to become the apprentices to the sun and the moon, destined to champion and uphold the brilliance of these celestial bodies for eternity. Amongst the countless stars, two souls were chosen for this profound honor, Aurora, radiant and vibrant and Selene, gentle and serene. They were brought together to undergo rigorous training that would span hundreds of years. As apprentices, they would age ever so slowly, granting them ample time to master their cosmic abilities and embrace the splendors of their destined roles. In the Celestial Palace, they trained side by side under the guidance of the wise Celestial Elders. Aurora and Selene shared not only knowledge but also laughter, dreams and eventually a profound love that transcended the boundaries of space and time. As the centuries passed, their hearts intertwined with an unbreakable bond and they found solace in each other's presence. But the weight of their celestial duties began to weigh heavily upon them. The elders explained the profound sacrifice they must make. Once they took up their positions as champion to the sun and champion to the moon, they could only meet each other in fleeting moments during their celestial crossing. Devastated by this revelation, Aurora and Selene sought counsel from the wisest sages and embarked on a quest to find a way to fulfill their destiny and duty while remaining together. They traversed the cosmos, seeking ancient knowledge and the counsel of forgotten beings, but no solution seemed apparent. Their hearts heavy with sadness, they returned to the Celestial Palace, where they were to take up their roles as champions. The day of their ascension arrived and the stars shone brighter than ever, heralding their momentous rise to power. But as the final hour approached, Aurora and Selene couldn't bear the thought of being apart forever. In a moment of bravery and defiance, they stood before the celestial elders and the entire assembly of celestial beings, their love shining like the most brilliant constellations. They pleaded for understanding, for the right to love each other while fulfilling their duties. The celestial elders, touched by the sincerity and purity of their love, considered their plea. My goodness, it's getting a bit cold in here. <sighs> Incendio. There, nice and warm. The heavens fell silent as they conferred amongst themselves, pondering the unique situation of these extraordinary souls. Finally, the head elder stepped forward with a smile as bright as the sun. The love you share is a celestial phenomenon, a force that transcends time and space, the Elder proclaimed. And so we grant you a boon. For a brief moment in the eons to come, during the rarest of celestial alignments, you shall be reunited as the sun and moon briefly align. Overjoyed, Aurora and Selene embraced, their tears of happiness shimmering like shooting stars. With renewed hope and determination, they embraced their celestial duties with even greater dedication, knowing that their love would endure across the vast expanse of the cosmos. And so, the ages turned, and with each passing millennium, the sun and moon aligned in a celestial dance that brought Aurora and Selene together. Their reunion was a cosmic celebration, painting the skies with colors never before seen, a symphony of love and light. As champions to the sun and moon, they fulfilled their destiny, but it was their love that illuminated the universe most profoundly. They became the epitome of celestial devotion, and their story was whispered among the stars, inspiring countless beings throughout the cosmos. And so the tale of Aurora and Selene, the radiant sun and the gentle moon, continues to shine in the firmament of time, an eternal reminder that even in the face of impossible odds, love can conquer all and bring together even the most distant of hearts. Why aren't we reading tales of the Beetle Bard? Honestly, is this what muggles think magic is like? It's kind of nice. Next story in your book. In a quaint village nestled at the edge of the enchanted forest, there stood a mysterious library that had been a source of wonder and fascination for generations. The locals spoke of its magical origins, but few had ventured inside, for the librarian was an elusive figure who seldom appeared. One day, a curious young girl named Lily stumbled upon the library's hidden entrance while chasing a fluttering butterfly. Pushing open the creaking door, she found herself in a world beyond her wildest imagination. The library seemed to stretch infinitely, its shelves lined with books of every shape and size, each adorned with intricate designs and glistening gems. 
As Lily explored the vast library, she discovered that the books held stories that came to life. Upon opening one, she was transported to enchanted lands where mystical creatures and brave heroes lived extraordinary adventures. With each tale, she felt the magic of the books seep into her soul. One book in particular caught her attention. It was bound in shimmering blue leather and its title, The Chronicles of Starlight, glimmered like distant stars. Lily gingerly opened the book and a radiant light burst forth, filling the library with a celestial glow. To her astonishment, she found herself whisked away into the very story she was reading. She became a part of the world of starlight, where stars twinkled like fireflies and the moon sang lullabies to slumbering mountains. In this enchanted realm, Lily met a kind-hearted young boy named Milo, who had been trapped in the story for ages. Milo explained that the story was cursed, and whoever entered its pages would become a character unable to return to their own world. Determined to help Milo and break the curse, Lily embarked on a journey through the magical lands of starlight. Together, they encountered mythical beings and solved riddles woven into the fabric of the tale. With every challenge they faced, their bond grew stronger, and they found solace in each other's company. As their quest neared its climax, Lily realized that she had fallen deeply in love with Milo, but she also knew that once the curse was broken, they might be separated forever. The weight of her feelings added a bittersweet touch to their adventure, making each moment even more precious. Finally, after braving trials and triumphs, they discovered the heart of the curse. A wicked sorceress who had woven her malice into the very core of the story. Drawing upon the strength of their love, they confronted the sorceress, with Lily unleashing a power she never knew she possessed. Their love's brilliance overwhelmed the sorceress's darkness, and the curse began to unravel. But as the story started to fall apart, Lily's heart sank, fearing she would lose Milo forever. Yet, in the last fleeting moment before the story's end, the enchanted library manifested itself around them. The librarian, a wise and enigmatic figure, appeared before them and revealed the library's true secret. This library, the librarian said, is a place where the lines between stories and reality blur. The magic within allows the bonds forged between the characters and the readers to transcend the pages. With a knowing smile, the librarian explained that the love Lily and Milo had discovered in the story was now a part of them, entwined in their very souls. The enchantment of starlight would live on within them, and they could be together forever, bridging the worlds of reality and fantasy. Back in the quaint village, the library became a cherished place for all, where stories came alive and readers journeyed to magical realms. And at the heart of the library, amid shelves adorned with stories of love and adventure, Lily and Milo found their haven, the place where they could share their love with others and cherish the extraordinary tale that had bound them together. <laughs> I have to be honest, darling. I am feeling rather tired as well. I'm just going to fall asleep here with you. I'll see you when we wake, my love. <laughs>